Hey everyone, welcome back to the garden. It could be a beautiful spring day today. If only it was a few degrees warmer. But anyway, we can't complain. By the time you're watching this, hopefully some actual spring sun will be upon us. You might also notice I've got this little microphone on my neck. My old one broke, so time for a bit of an upgrade. This is what I'm using today, a bit of a neck tickler, but hopefully it works okay. Now, today we're doing some actual gardening, some actual practical things that will help improve my summer display this year. Today we're starting off the Enceti Ventricosa Morellii, the red banana relative, a fantastic tropical style plant, incredibly easy to grow during our summers, and it really puts on the growth fast. Massive leaves, beautiful red colouring. It really is a plant I wouldn't be without in my garden. But you might remember my last video when I showed them was way back in early November. After we'd had that amazingly mild autumn, that definitely didn't last, did it? I brought my plants in in around the first or second week of November brought them inside, ready to pot them up and keep them essentially dry stored, but in small pots full of compost. But then Harriet came along about a week earlier than we all thought, and it meant they had to be stood up over winter just in a tray. So this winter they have essentially been dry stored. So really today, I'm actually gonna see for the first time how they've actually made it through the winter, if they've made it through the winter, and hopefully give you a few tips on how you can get yours started this spring. They really are incredible plants and a lot easier to grow than you might expect. So let's get started. So you remember how beautiful these plants looked last summer? The sun filtering through those gorgeous red leaves. Well, this is what they look like now. <laughs> Completely dried out, brown shriveled leaves. They definitely look a bit of a mess. But essentially, I think of them as a kind of bulb over winter. You're just storing it, preventing it from rotting away. It really is amazing what these plants can come back from. And hopefully I can show you that in today's video. So these ones here, the three larger ones, I just simply put them in empty pots just to keep them upright. I used to keep them in pots with dry compost in the base and then store them in my old conservatory. That was great because I could just keep them ticking over through winter, given a small amount of water, and that way they didn't lose much size. Whereas this way around, almost completely dry storing them. As you can see, the plants, they're definitely a lot slimmer looking than they were when I brought them in, a lot lighter as well. So this probably isn't the best way of getting a big plant this year, but these plants will still put on some pretty insane growth. But those were the three larger ones. These are the four smaller ones. Now, you might be wondering, when do I get them started? And the answer to that is pretty much around now. Anywhere from late March through to sort of mid-April is a great time to start off your inseti. And that way, you get them into active growth before it's time to harden them off and bring them outside around early to mid-May here. So, let's have a quick look at them and assess any winter damage. So firstly, a general rule, if you see any green, if it's firm, that plant has made it. So these three large ones, they're all good. See there, that's nice and firm. This one here, if I just peel some of these leaves away, again, that's nice and firm. When it comes to the smaller plants, smaller insetti are trickier to get through winter because there isn't the massive shooter stem to actually keep enough water and reserves to actually keep the plant going through winter. But you can probably see here, this one that feels firm that looks good so i think those three large ones there they're all right the problem comes to this small one this one i know just as i bring it out it's completely mushy so you see there the shooter stem well it's now completely snapped away from the corn and that's just completely rotted through but all in all six out of seven that definitely isn't too bad i can live with that like i said the small ones are a bit tricky to get through winter and if you've ended up with one like this it's not necessarily anything you've done wrong just one of those things probably the best advice i can say for smaller ones is that you're best off potting them up and growing them as a house plant over winter rather than trying to dry store them if the trunk or studer stem is less than maybe two and a half inches across 60 mil something like that then i would pot it up grow as a house plant, just drip it water over winter. And that way you've got a better success rate of actually getting them through. But what do I do with these now? It's time to tidy them up. When it comes to tidying them up then, it really is incredibly easy. And I find it one of those really satisfying jobs, just seeing them go from this into something that's almost ready to grow again this year. So I'll show you with the big one here. As you can see, tatty mess. But basically what we do is just chop off anything that's dead, that's brown, that's dying, all that's gonna get in the way of new growth. Really simple. So essentially, just work the way down from the top of the plant, pulling everything off. As you can see, 
a lot of the leaves have just gone completely shriveled, but it doesn't matter. When it comes to the main roller, I just chop the whole thing off because what you might find is that the leaves actually dry up, they seal up like that, and those can stop the new growth from pushing through. So I chop those off as well. And essentially it's a case of working down the whole plant and removing every single one. Don't worry, I won't make you watch every single one that I do, but we'll just tidy this one up quickly now. So already I can see the beginnings of the shooter stem or trunk coming through and it suddenly looks a lot better, doesn't it? Okay, the plane's going over now, the bird's singing. It really is great to be outside again and for it to not be completely freezing. So, I just used scissors for it. I tried to get a neat cut and a tidy cut on every single bit because the last thing you want to do is rip too much of this growth down and potentially cause rot at this time of year. So just cut them as neatly as you can. It's been a while since I did a practical video and I feel like the episode of The Apprentice where they do some sort of live shopping channel thing and it's just absolute chaos trying to do a practical demonstration, but hopefully I just about pull it off. So we're just about getting there now. And you can see this is essentially what we're left with. So if I pick that up a little bit more, take it out of its pot. As you can see, this one had a small amount of soil on the base, which is just what came with it and I didn't clean off last autumn. There's still a few tatty leaves around the base, but those can generally sort of be easily pulled away. That one I'll chop to save damage in the base. So there we have one cleaned up and seti Ventricosum reliae. As you can see, it's a lot smaller and lighter than it was at the end of last autumn, but these soon size up. So I'll get the rest tidied up and then I'll show you what comes next. It's just occurred to me that I do actually have some knee pads, which I haven't used today. That's a bit of an oversight, but to at least save you from some misery, I'll speed up this next section and then we'll fast forward right to these plants tidied up and ready to be planted up. So let's go. So a little bit of mess around later and this is what we're left with. As you can see, they're a nice healthy pink color and each one has now got the rollers visible at the top. You can see the new leaves starting to push through there. So there's nothing stopping that growth from pushing through and even the small ones, they look pretty healthy. So I guess the rule is there, if the shooter stem is around three inches or bigger, then there's a good chance that they will make it through winter. And to be honest, considering they were pretty much entirely dry stored from early November, right the way through to the end of March. I think these are done really well. They've not lost too much size and it's a good starting point for this season's growth. But the next step is to get them potted up. So essentially, I'll be using the pots that I've got out for these and you don't need to worry about a big pot at this stage. It's still too early to plant these amazing bananas out in the garden because there's still a good chance of frost. In fact, I'm filming this on Sunday, the next couple of nights get down to freezing. By the time you're watching this, hopefully we'll have no more freezing nights, no more frost forecast, but will that actually happen? Probably not. And in reality, frost can push into early May, sometimes even into early June. So I wouldn't recommend actually planting these out until the beginning of or early May, when you can at least see the next couple of weeks forecast and make an educated guess. So I'm literally gonna pop them up into these small pots even if you plan on growing your seti in pots all summer, I wouldn't plant them into the full size pots just yet. There's a couple of reasons for that. Firstly, at this stage, we're only potting them up for around the next month, six weeks, before they can either go out into the ground or be planted into a large container. So essentially, we want to get just enough compost around the roots, around the base of the plants here, to get some fresh white roots pushing out into it. They soon fill up that compost. The next thing is that you don't want that pot the compost to be completely soggy. So essentially, we don't give them too much water because that might mean they actually rot away. And it'd be such a shame to lose them at this late stage. So what I do is just give them a little bit of watering today and then maybe every week or so, I'll up it a little bit. And naturally, with the increased temperature, 
hopefully, the increased daylight, they'll start to fill out, put on some weight, put on some size, and be ready for some big leaves come May. So it's literally just about getting them started at this stage. And the other thing is, these are going back inside. It's still too early to keep them outside, potentially too early to really get them going in an unheated greenhouse yet. So you don't want to put them in a huge pot, just have to lug them inside and back out again. Start them in a small pot, and then you can soon pot them up or plant them out in around six weeks time. So let's get the first one potted up and give you a good idea what I'm doing. I'm using this, which is a B&Q multi-purpose compost, importantly peat-free, just because I was literally passing B&Q when it made sense to pop in and get some. What I would say is it doesn't really matter which brand of compost you use to pop these up. It is literally just have a grow medium around the roots to literally get them started. But whatever you do, if you can go peat-free, it really is the way forward. And I think this year, every single type of compost is expensive. So personally, I would say limit how much you actually need to use. Using the small pots is a good way of doing that. And secondly, it's worth spending just that little bit extra and going for peat free. It really is something great you can do for the environment. So let's get the first one potted up. So gloves on, more to stop getting the camera actually dirty than anything else. It's time to get some compost in the pots then we'll plant the incessi up. So I literally just put a couple of inches in the bottom. I don't know why when I'm talking plant stuff, I just default to imperial measurements, but who knows, it just happens. So this one's going in the largest pot, as you can see, but it's still only a bit bigger than the actual base of the plant, the corm, so it should be about right. Gotta say, the compost is a little bit lumpy, but I guess that's part of actually having it in a bale, and if I was planning ahead, trying to do the best that I could for the plant, I should have really put it in a large gorilla tub, something like that, and just lighten it up, move it around a bit, give it a good mix around, but it'll work nicely anyway. So I'm literally just putting a couple of inches in the base of the pot. I'll put the insetti in, plunk it in somewhere like that, and then I'll just pack some compost around it. And then I'll show you what they all look like when they're done, and I'll tell you about a few care tips to keep them over the next month, six weeks, until it's time to plant them out. A few minutes of potting up later then, and this is what we're left with. Isn't it amazing the transformation already from those shriveled up brown messes to these giant bulbs that look ready for huge summer growth? At least that's the way I see it anyway. So to go for it very quickly, all I did was put a couple of inches, 50 mil or so, of this peat free compost in the base of the pots. I sat the insetti root ball on top of it, and then I very simply packed some more compost in around it. And as you can see from this one here, I wasn't too worried about filling them right up to the top of the pots. It is literally just to have a bit of a root ball, enough compost them to get the roots into and to actually slowly start filling up with water. So these plants now have gone from a shriveled mess, I wasn't sure if they'd made it or not, to now suddenly being full of promise. Summer feels one step closer. So what are some care tips that you can use to get these plants off the best start possible for massive leaves and a great summer display this year? So what I'm doing now with these plants then is give them a small amount of water to kickstart that growth. Well, actually what I will be doing this year is take them inside, put them on the tray and then give them some water. I don't want to get carried away with a practical demonstration and end up spilling loads of water as I take them through the kitchen. So I'll definitely water them after they're in place this time. But what I'll be doing is put them in the brightest spot possible, give them a drip of water, and then just wait in until that roller started pushing through. And as soon as you can see the rollers growing, you know then the plant's in active growth, it's taken off this year. So as that leaf pushes through, I'll increase the watering from maybe every week to every few days. And once it gets to around mid-April, that leaf will be pushing right through, reaching for the ceiling, the plant is well on its way. And at that point, I start to give the plant a little bit of food to help it on its way. But realistically, by the end of April, if you've got these plants in front of or near a window, somewhere relatively warm, and you give them a bit of water, they'll be growing well away. The roots will absolutely be filling the compost, the leaves will be pushing up, and by the end of April, it's time to begin the hardening off process. Essentially, hardening the plant off is getting it used to the outdoor conditions over a period of about one to two weeks. Because obviously being kept inside, the new growth, it simply isn't used to the UV light, the wind, the rain, and everything else that the UK weather will throw at it. So you want to gradually get it used to that. Don't worry if you do get some damage to the leaves that you've actually grown inside. They tend to be a bit weak and thin anyway, but the leaves that do grow outside once the plant is actually out are a lot stronger, a lot more beautiful. But what I try to do is, 
at the end of April, look at the forecast. And as long as there's no freezing nights forecast, I bring the plants out during the days and maybe keep them somewhere close to the house or bring them back inside if there's going to be a colder night. And if you can repeat that for about a week, keeping them somewhere relatively sheltered, the plant soon acclimatizes the outdoor conditions. And that way, the newer leaves starting to come through will be tougher, stronger, more beautiful red leaves that you know and love. And at that point then, hopefully, we'll be at a point where we can begin to plant them outside. If not, if there is a late frost forecast, then you can always put them into a polytunnel, put them into a greenhouse, just to keep them ticking over. But that's what I'll be doing anyway. So essentially, the next few weeks, it's all about giving them a drip of water, getting them started. As the plant pushes the roots out, gets new leaves growing through, you can then increase the feeding a bit, and at the end of April, early May, start to get it used to the outdoor temperatures. And then, once it gets to mid-May, hopefully this year, the frost will be behind us and it's time to pull them out of your garden and enjoy these red leaves as part of your summer display again this year. Hopefully you've enjoyed today's video, got something from it. And as always, if you've got any further questions, leave them in the comment section below and I try to get back to each and every one of them. But look out for my next video, another practical demonstration with one of my huge leaf plants here. I'm really excited for that one. But as always, thank you very much for watching. I hope you're having a great week and I'll see you next time. See you later.